Hi, this is your Chief Science Officer, Brazos Minshew. Welcome to Wellness Talks. Today we're going to talk about a very important subject that I'm sure many of you know more about than I do, and that subject is toxicity. Here's the reason I say this. Studying environmental toxins is just like trying to, to uh, keep up with a speeding train. We are dumping so many more toxins into our environment. It's literally impossible for us to keep up. But the moment we discover a toxin and we find a test for measuring it, by that time, oh my goodness, we've already created new generations of these toxins. What's more, they begin to interact. And once they interact in water and in sunlight, there's absolutely, literally no way for us to predict what they're going to do as a combination and what they're going to do inside the human body. Here's what we do know. It's nothing good. That's right. Everything they do is bad. And the only thing that we can talk about is whether it's a little bad or a lot bad. Here's one of the toxins that we began to study in the 1980s, and it came as a real surprise to me that this was something making people sick, and it was the chemical Teflon. Now, Teflon was discovered a good number of years ago and came into popular use back in the 1960s so that we didn't have to cook any longer with lard, right, with hydrogenated fats. So we can get rid of the fats. We've got something new and healthy. It's called Teflon. Well, in the 1980s, they began to notice that some of the sickest children had high levels of Teflon in their bloodstream. And so Baylor University in Dallas, Texas, went worldwide and started measuring the levels of Teflon in the fat cells and bloodstream of everyone from children to older people and finding that Teflon was in all of their bloodstreams. It was in all of their fat cells. We are all carrying around Teflon. What's that doing to us? I can only tell you nothing good because we really don't know to this day, except that the higher the Teflon levels, the sicker the people are. Other than that, we don't know exactly what this is doing inside the human body. Here's what we can say with great certainty about all levels of toxicity. They all create inflammation. So a good measurement or a good test to see how inflamed you are is the level of C-reactive protein you have in your bloodstream. Now C-reactive protein is a blood marker of inflammation. The higher the level of C-reactive protein, the higher the level of inflammation. What's a good number? Zero is a good number. We don't want the inflammation in our body that's run away, that our body has to fight against. So zero is a good number of C-reactive protein. Uh, by the way, I get mine tested at least twice a year. Uh, if I'm feeling badly, I might go through four tests in a year, and you can do the same. There's no downside to testing your C-reactive protein more often. You just start getting a trend line of your own levels of inflammation because C-reactive protein marks our level of inflammation. And you can go through detoxification processes even if you don't know what the toxin is that's creating the burden. So keep an eye on your C-reactive protein. As those levels begin to rise above zero and there should not be very much toxicity in your system at all, not much at all. The lower the number, the healthier you're going to be. As it starts to rise above zero, that's the amount of to toxic load called allostatic load, which deals with toxicity and stress. That's the, the load that you're carrying around, the burden that you bear. The other one is LDL protein. Uh, sometimes we call uh, this bad cholesterol, the LDL. LDL, lethal cholesterol. LDL, lousy cholesterol, right? LDL is bad cholesterol. It's a protein. Uh, that marks toxicity in our system. And the higher that gets, the more toxic we are and the more likely we are to have a negative health event. Now, what's your optimum or ideal level of LDL? Well, in the most non-toxic environments, for example, Bushman and Kalahari uh, or the Aleuts up in the North Pole, uh, all of these people have an LDL of around 70 to 80, and that becomes our target as well. We want to be toxin-free. So our, our target is uh, an LDL of 70 and a C-reactive protein approaching zero. Lower is better. Okay, so as we start to get these high levels of C-reactive protein, what do we know that will help us drain that away to put out that fire? Well, of course, Nopalea. Nopalea is an extraordinarily powerful anti-inflammatory, but it's actually only a very mild uh, detoxification. A good example of that is if a person's cells get very filled with toxins, filled with waste, they begin to, to uh, you begin to get puffy. The solution to pollution is dilution, right? So if you're toxic, you're going to get puffy. Well, Nopalea puts out the fire associated with the toxins, but also drains away all of that extracellular puffiness. It's a very mild, very gentle form of detoxification. We call it passive detoxification. 
And now we can talk about a more serious detoxification with the Nopalea Daily Cleanse. The Nopalea Daily Cleanse is really designed in two ways. One, it uses herbal substances to pull in, like a magnet, pull in some of the toxins, for example, lead, cadmium, mercury, some of the other heavy metals, and also to absorb each of those toxins like a sponge. We want to pull them in, suck them up, take them out. That's the way that Nopalea Daily Cleanse works. Nopalea Daily Cleanse for deep tissue detoxification. Nopalea to help us reduce the damage from those toxins and help drain them away, drain away that puffiness. With that one-two combination and using these things daily, you'll be able to keep those LDL and C-reactive protein levels down at their lowest level. So practice the 10 essentials, keep your level of toxicity low, and we'll talk again soon.